points of interest will be the topic of discussion today. I stepped away from my computer on Friday for about <laughs> two hours at a meeting with East West Bank. Um, we just signed them on for collateral. But um, I came back and it was like a, it was like a war zone. A lot of uh, <laughs> attention <laughs> on FinTwit uh, regarding these POIs. So I wanted to take a moment, just kind of explain to you guys how I have personally seen them work and how I've used them to hit the last five out of six AMC runs. Um, so let's get started. There's basically four things that I use to identify any type of, of run for Amy. Now I'm talking about Amy specifically, but as we know, the meme basket is very much correlated. And you know, a lot of the times when AMC is making a move, you'll see Bed Bath & Beyond make a move, you'll see GameStop make a move, etc. And whatever stock is kind of hot at the moment um, and has the personality uh, within that POI window to make a move, it, it can be a lot more likely. So just want to talk about AMC specifically this time because AMC is the only one that I've seen follow the POIs, uh, I'm sorry, the POI windows so accurately. Now, just to name drop real quick, and I, I'm not gonna talk about him the whole time, I wanna give you my perspective, but with trading with emotions, the way he sees it is on, a, I believe, a 62-day cycle. It, it's like every two months, it, there's a POI window that the stock has a high level of volatility, and it has a very solid chance of either making a big run or making a big drop. Now. A couple of the times he's nailed it perfectly and more times the POI has played out to be inverse. Now the entire fractal that we've been tracking on AMC for the last two years, it's a one, two, three, four, five quad witching cycles. So that's what we're going to use today because my perspective is different um, than TWEs in the sense of yes, those two month windows can be very likely to hit. But as of late, it hasn't been. The way that I've seen that it has gone, it's been making some pretty, pretty big moves. And I'm not talking, you know, 160%, no like real squeeze types, but you know, 20%, 30%, even up to 50% moves in between those two month windows. So this is how I personally see the POIs. And when I look at the fractal taken over this five month quad witching cycle, I just put it here on a blank canvas so I can show you guys in the clearest way possible. Ignore this red one for now. I don't really look at it on a two month cycle. I look at it based on the price action. Every single one of these peaks or valleys that you see, that's exaggerated. To me is a POI, a volatility zone. So just remember, it's really difficult on the smaller time frames to see this entire thing because it's so fast and they, again, for the million time, they can stretch things out over time or they can stretch things out over price. They can also do the opposite. They can shrink things down, they can speed things up. I want you to look at this when you look at an AMC chart and I want you to just like visually see it in your head. The most obvious move that is made when AMC runs this fractal is this one. It's the June blast, okay? The June blast is the most exaggerated. So that's why to the naked eye, it makes the most sense when you see it on like a one hour chart. It's like, oh, okay, that's probably the June move. But remember all of these little runs here, these peaks are June moves. They're just shrunk. They're smaller versions in what we like to call shrinking iterations. Okay, and every single one of these peaks, again, to me is a POI. So, well, you can take this and measure it in like a two month window, right? And be like, oh, here's your, here's your two month window, right? You, you know, you could sit here and say like, all right, well, how come on this two month window, it didn't run here, right? Played in verse, but how come on this two month window, it ran here? Oh, okay, well, that one played out. Okay, well, there's all of this price action in between the two months that is not being spoken about. And a lot of times that is where AMC makes some pretty substantial moves. You look at this. I just want you to understand that this June move is the top here, 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 
right? Like these are all June moves. They're just a lot smaller. Let's just dive into really quick, like what I mean by volatility window. We don't know when a volatility zone is gonna end up in upward price action, uh, price movement, or a complete collapse. However, there are ways that I use to try to figure out what's gonna be more likely during that time, okay? So on top of the generalized POI location, like where we're at, it's really important for me to go with the narrative. That is my number one tool when it comes to trading macro moves. The narrative has to line up and that's pretty much the fractal's weakness because they could run, if there was no narrative whatsoever and there was no news and everything just went on infinitely, this thing would be impossible to figure out. We wouldn't have any idea, right, what to expect and when. It could just repeat this and play inverse this time, upward next time, inverse next time. You would have no clue. The narrative is the Achilles heel, how I see it, peddled by the mainstream media, peddled by Adam Aaron, etc. Right? And within these windows of volatility, there is usually some big time narrative to justify this big ass move that we're having here, or this big move, or this big move. There's and where does the narrative come from? Fundamentals, all right? We see everything Adam Aaron is doing right now to get these shorts out of the stock and to kill that narrative. So our bullish narrative lines up with what's about to happen next year. But it, it all makes sense at the end of the day. The third thing is the options chain. During these volatility windows, we like to see a lot of call, you know, a lot of gamma ramp activity going on. We like to see a lot of hedges on the opposite side, right? We like to see using thinkorswim, um, time, price, opportunity, TPO, I don't know if you guys have used it. Right now, there is a big time sell call wall, right, at $8, which means they do not want it to go above $8 whatsoever. When you're long a call that's out the money, right now the stock is, what was I gonna say, 550, right? You wanna buy $8 calls, you want it to go past eight dollars right to get maximum profit when you sell an eight dollar call you don't want it to go there or you're on the hook for unlimited losses unless it's a covered call um and the fourth thing that everyone uses that also drives me um a little insane because they're all lagging are indicators um i could show you guys two really quick um when we flip over to the other chart so now let me just take this really quickly and squash it a bit just to make some more sense of this, okay? Now that it's a little smaller, visually that you can see it, the moves don't look so exaggerated anymore, right? So, this, the January run, okay? Is a POI, okay? It is the same window of volatility that this is, even though it's much smaller when we took the bars pattern. It's the same window of volatility that this is, even though this one's down all the way, right? Playing inverse. It's the same window of volatility that this is, that this is, that this is, etc., etc. It does not matter what the bars pattern looks like, okay? It just matters that it's a window of volatility. I'm gonna take the recent run that we had. Um, I took the fractal bars from there, just so you can see what I mean by it shrunken, right? So this pattern is also right here, right? Same pattern. It's also right here, right? It's also right here. It's also right here, right? But it played inverse here. Do you understand? So I hope, I hope that makes it just a little more clear. And then we can also expand this, right? Because the fractal can shrink, it can expand, like I was talking about before. There you go. Okay. There you go. There you go. Okay. This is why it's so confusing. Okay, that's why you can't use fractals. Because they're all over the damn place. And they're all the same. The, the thing repeats every single day, over and over again. The problem is they can manipulate it aggressively, right? Every single time it looks like it's about to make a run, it can do the polar opposite. Look what happened in After Hours just a few weeks ago. I got murdered. 
right? That I posted that huge loss for you guys. Um, did we have any idea that was gonna happen? No, but that was a POI. It was a smaller POI and they used news and just completely killed it. This is the most manipulated stock I have ever seen. Every single time we get to a POI, something really good can happen or something really bad can happen. That's kind of the, the general thesis around it. Let's take this pattern, okay? And let's put it on the actual price action and let's look at the quad witching dates and the OPEX dates. It took me like two and a half hours to make this. So I just wanna get this nice and clear for you guys. Like I was talking about with the POIs being in all these different places, let me show you what that looks like, okay? Let's just take this pattern and we'll move one POI to the next and let's see if it matches up, okay? Bam, matches up perfectly. Now, again, the bars are a different size, okay? Make them smaller, visually, whatever makes you know you feel better about it. But here we go, POI, POI, right? POI, 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 POI. This one played out inverse. Like, do you get it? Like, here's another one, POI, 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 POI. POI. This one played out inverse. Okay, it, it's it's the same thing. Different volatility windows. Some play out, some play inverse. Let's look at this January run right here too. The big January run. Doesn't look so big to me, right? A lot smaller, a lot smaller. This was a, whatever, 700% run. This wasn't, 113%. But that's a POI, okay? Pretty simple to understand once you see it visually. Um, so let's take it the way that Sam had it, right? Um, with his two month window, 62 day cycle. Here we go. So we're gonna take it basically from this quad witching cycle. I personally do this sometimes, but for me, it makes more sense to line up the fractal with the actual price action. It just fits nicer you know what i'm saying like you can do this based on the cycle uh theory that that sam has that, that's fine um or you could take it from an opex date the opex dates are the 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 green lines are the quad witching dates the opex dates are the blue ones you can do the same thing too look i took it from this opex date just now poi 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 it matches perfectly right so this is where he had it um what do you got june here, June. There you go. Look. Again. POI. Inverse. POI. Let's play it out. POI. Inverse. Okay. So, where are we now? Right? From June. Five cycles. Let's move it down so you can see. That's it. That's it. Right? Now, I'm going to line it up for you guys so it matches up a little nicer with the price action so you have a better visual representation to what you're looking at. This is how I had it and how I posted it on Twitter. Right? So again, again, so there's no confusion. Okay? I'm going from, I'm just matching up POI with the price action POI, okay? So let's have this January move and I put the January move to line up with the beginning of the fractal sequence that we're currently running, okay? Now let's line it up nicely with the price action. Let's do this again, all right? This one played opposite, okay? This one played correctly. This one played correctly, this one played correctly, right? We have another one here, but look how much smaller it is, right? It, it, okay, you guys get it, you guys get it. POI, and here's the next POI, okay? Completely ignore the bars pattern size, and now let's be more accurate. Let's look at everything else that's going on. Go over the three things that I spoke about. Um, narrative, right? So there's your narrative, FOMC, and you got earnings coming up. Guarantee you that's what CNBC says, right? They also just dropped the, uh, the credit card. Right, last week, looks narrative-wise, narrative 
lining up pretty nicely, I would say. Okay, let's check that one box. Um, option chain, um, time price opportunity right now. I was telling you guys before, there is a large call sell wall at $8. I had the Look at this week's option chain, May 5th, baby. Okay, you know how this goes. Dealers wanna keep that money for all the open interest that they have on the options chain. So my prediction is we blast off to six, maybe 6.35 tomorrow or Tuesday. That's how I personally see it. And then I see a big retracement into Friday, basically dropping us right into earnings and after earnings, hitting us down further. So, um, talk to me about Max Payne, boys and girls. What happens basically every single week with this stock? They bring it to a Max Payne level. Why? So they can keep the most amount of money and hurt the call buyers and the put buyers on both sides. It's the maximum amount of money lost on both sides of the option chain. I believe Max Payne this week was five. I, I checked on Friday. But just looking at the option chain really quick, right? Open interest, where are we at? Five and a half and six dollars. Boom, huge, huge amount of call options there. Guarantee you, <laughs> guarantee you these fuckers won't end up in the money. That's how the game works, right? It's a casino and the house always wins. I don't know how many more times you gotta see that to really like understand it. Let's go to indicators really quick. I'll pull up two for you guys. I have the RSI and the MFI, which is the money flow index. Um, RSI, you guys, you guys, I'm pretty sure understand how that works, but I'm looking at it on the four hour because if we're going to make a pretty substantial move, usually the four hour and the three hours where I like to look at that, where did they hit us down to on that after hours action, right? Oversold baby, right there. Oversold. That's where you want it to buy. Okay. And we're moving right up. Look, the SMA is, it's riding it. It's riding it. I'm looking for right here. Okay. Pretty, pretty simple stuff, guys. Now with the MFI, every single time before a run, you get massive money outflows. Okay. Let's look right here. For example, money outflows, money inflows. Okay. Money outflows, money inflows. Where are we now? I drew it in red so you guys can see clearer. Da, 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 da. Money outflows, money inflows, okay? And I wanna see this, right, above 80. Two indicators, there's a billion out there. You guys use them all. I can't take you through all the 30 indicators that I use, but just wanna give you some visual representation. And one final thing, the data points, okay? Have they been useful in the past? Short interest, cost to borrow, um, shares on loan, utility, all that stuff, it has been useful in the past. But like I have been talking about for the last four months, it is now manipulated. It's all manipulated. How many days has AMC been on, been on the threshold list? Come on, you can't look at the threshold list and be like, oh, we're gonna run because the threshold list. It doesn't work that way anymore, all right? Adapt. Right now, we look great. We look great. I, I'm long calls out to May 19th, okay? but. I know how this stock has been and I know its personality, okay? And let me just pull up my chart. I clean this up for you guys. I know its personality, okay? And if you look at the refractal that we just, the sequencing that we just ran, right, recently, since the beginning of the year, it's not like any other fractal you've seen this stock run, right? These aren't gigantic squeezes of 700%. They're little runs. Like this is a trader's stock now. This is not like a buy and hold to the moon stock at this moment in time. Will it become one next year? I believe it will. Because narrative wise, everything is just playing out perfectly. Um, and I'm sure the option chain and the time price opportunity and the indicators will look great next year as well. But right now it's an extended version and it's smaller, okay? So let's be smart and expect it to continue to be an extended version in the current move we're about to have, okay? A lot of people are like, on Twitter, like, we're gonna go to 10 bucks on this run, we're gonna go to eight bucks this week. Sorry, I don't agree, like whatsoever. The purpose of this algorithm 
is to make as much money as possible. It's constant bull trap after constant bear trap. Breaks the 200 a, uh, EMA upward, breaks the 200 EMA downward, right? Like it's just fake out after fake out. Like why you would expect it to make a 400% move, it's just out of the realm of like, I think you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, to be quite frank. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to be a dick or anything, but guys, wake up, man. Wake up. How many, how much more money do you have to lose to understand how the personality of this damn thing works, okay? We're not going like this. It's not happening. It's not happening. If we make a move here, awesome. But again, it's been delayed. So let's analyze it like it will probably be delayed this is how i have it right 6 to 6 30 on this first run i want to see this um before fomc okay before fomc i want to see this tomorrow and tuesday then i want to see a pullback going into earnings i want them to hit it back down to the macro fi uh, 0.65 fib at 521 i don't think they'll be able to short it below five i'd be i'd be genuinely shocked if they got it to to 485 again. I'd be genuinely shocked. Um, because I know that when AMC runs its squeeze fractal, whatever, moves, it doesn't like to retrace. It doesn't like to give you a second chance to get in. Usually it has a little pullback and it just keeps on blasting through volume shells. Um, so hit, see that first move? Bounce off the 520 and then I want to see eight bucks right at that call sell wall by May 19th. I don't know because I don't know the speed yet. We're not there. I don't know if it's going to be the week of May 12th or the week of May 19th. Now, from a common sense standpoint, talking about everything that I just mentioned, okay, let's go back to the options chain and look at those two weeks. Here's May 12th. Does this look like a dangerous options chain to you? Absolutely fucking not. Okay, there's nothing about this that's hurting dealers. Nothing, right? You have a ton of puts here, um, all in the money here. Um, those could be hedges, those could be them going long. We don't know. Um, but if I had a guess, I would say the smart idea would to be run it to eight this week because no one can really get hurt, okay? Look at the May 19th chain, loaded to the gills, okay? Do you really think they are going to let any of these contracts <laughs> end up in the money? Do you really think they're going to let... I, I see people posting $20 price targets. Like, you, you think they're going to let 116,000, 78,000 contracts end up in the money? It's just not going to happen. Um, so, listen, that's my two cents. We look great this week. I want to see that run. I want to see the pullback. I want to see the blast off to eight before we drop to 370 for that triple tap before we make our move in July. Hit me in the chat and I'll see you guys this week.